All righty. Good morning, everybody. Let's talk about slow blues for a minute. This is a spontaneous little broadcast. Saturday morning here for me. Um, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about Alrighty. slow blues for a minute. Good morning. Um, whoops, sorry. It's my own channel. Um, here's what I want to do, guys. I want to take the slow blues in the key of E. So grab an A harmonica. I, I want to focus on just two simple rules, two simple things that might change your slow blues game without overthinking it, without overthinking strategy like crazy. So let me just play a little bit to this track. Um, these are the brand new Ultimate Blues Jam acoustic tracks. This is the slow delta in E. So let's check it out. Um, yeah. All right, cool. There we are. Y'all ready? You got, an, you got an A harp? I'm gonna stick to second position for this example. So grab that A harp. First example is just space. Something we've all talked about, all heard about, but just trying to use space effectively. Nice to let these turnarounds go by and don't play. All right, so space. That seems pretty like apparent that if you leave a little space, it helps the listener really understand what you're saying musically, but it also helps you consider what you're going to say next and what you just said, what musically what you just said, so that when you react to it, it's tied together. When you react to that, so you play something and then it's kind of like you're you're hearing that and uh, a little hair sticking straight out. And then you hear that little idea that you played and you're trying to let it influence you into the next line. That's step one. Then I would say another thing to think about, and good morning to everybody tuning in. Hello, Germany and Uruguay. JD, what's going on? Right on, Peter. Um, so yeah, you know, like uh, let's let's just take one other concept, a really big one here, though, and that would be sustain long notes. If you're not using this, the power of long notes in your music in general, but especially a slow blues, you're kind of missing some really special things that can happen. So check this out. Just hold a note and apply the same rule of a little space after upside down twice today, you guys. It doesn't matter really what, in fact, the more I, I mess around with this idea of the long notes, it's almost um, irrelevant like where you head. I mean, yeah, there's some pretty unpleasant notes like let's say three draw, seven draw, sustained. In fact, if there's ever an area where you need to be careful with, with what note you're gonna go to in second position, it is when you're sustaining the note. Because that note three draw will be way sharp. It just t sounds terrible. It can be used effectively as a passing note. Um, <laughs> hello, Anthony. Good morning, John. Jean-Pierre. All right, so like... 
Three draw, yeah, be careful of that one. Try to think of another note besides the three draw, seven draw. Um, there, aren't, there aren't many notes that you can play that would get you in trouble other than one other rule, I will add, because people always ask me this. Um, if you head to a, the root of the four chord and sustain it on the one chord, like a four blow over the one chord, that's just going to straight up be out of tune for the song. Otherwise, that's it. Try to think of something. Try to really think for a minute, like what it what is it that you're afraid of when you're playing and moving around? Slow blues, I think the thing that happens for people is that they're uncomfortable with being so exposed, you know, like here it is, this all this space, and it's up to me to create something. Well, you're putting that pressure unnecessarily on yourself. You don't need to constantly create in a slow blues. You're just trying to create tension, create emotion and really that can be done quite simply with saying very little let me just experiment experiment a little more if you dig learning live like this join me today by the way i should mention i'm teaching in a couple hours from now a class a slim harpo class i'll update the product description in case you want a last minute experience so here we go this the, i'll add one more ingredient texture so if you're beyond playing just single notes and you guys want to get good at playing slow blues, bring the texture into the playing. Just focus on the technique that you have outside of sing clean sound, clean single notes. Dirty notes, octaves, splits, tongue technique like uh, tongue flutters, tongue blocking, all this. Um, bring that in. Vibrato. There's another idea, repetition. Hand technique mixed in. Take two five draw. I'm not really sit, you know what I mean. I'm not really moving around or saying too much. And this is how I how I would really approach a slow blues. And here's what's cool. Of course, I'm gonna throw in some faster riffs and runs and other things that I play. But at that point, when I do insert those types of ideas, they're balanced out by the space. They're balanced out by the texture I created with all these things I'm doing outside of that. So there's balance. So then you can play a oh, final take here. Then you can play something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave space. I'm going to do some long notes and texture, but I'm going to show you what it sounds like to then Contrast and balance that with like a faster run, how nice that sounds. So you got to let it cool for a minute. If you're going to play something really light and fast, at least, look, this is all my opinion, I should say, obviously. This is just one approach. But I think it, it works well for somebody trying to get better at playing specifically slow blues, which is what we're talking about today. Um, this is a Marine Band Deluxe that I am playing today. really like the Deluxe because they've 
triple lacquered the front end of the harmonica. All right. Yes. Hey, Bill, what's going on, man? I will see you in class later today. I'm feeling spontaneous today. So let's just do a final final. There's another minute left in this track or so. Let's talk about one last topic related to, to slow blues in second position, which is getting out of the rut of playing holes one through six. Let's take that angle for just a minute. Um, you're headed to the high end of the harmonica and you're wondering what is available. Instead of me just teaching you a whole bunch of riffs on the high end, just listen to how I use it. It's a very simple approach. I, I have a very, very basic approach to playing the high end of, typically, of cross harp. I don't, I don't play it like um, John Popper, Mitch Kashmar, um, some other players that are just really intricate on the high end. Um, I do that for first position, but not in second as much. So here's what I might do. More texture, more technique, for sure. I will share a little bit of this. You know, all I'm doing on the high end, typically, besides engaging in some octaves and splits and trying to get the sound to feel and sound bigger, is I'm I'm going to the high end and doing focusing on the major pentatonic scale. That's what I'm doing. We don't have access to all the the per, the perfect blue scale I wouldn't say perfect but uh, it's easy more easily attainable uh, blue scale like on the bottom of the harmonica in second position so what I'm focused on when I'm playing up top in any style of music typically is I'm focused typically major pentatonic it's the my girl riff. And it's six blow, six draw, seven draw, eight draw, eight blow, nine blow. I've talked about this before. And if you kind of just get yourself moving around, um, scale notes first up and down, and then jump notes and take some time to really find a relationship between the notes and the scale that you're playing. Experiment going from one note to a different note, etc., and swapping out. you'll find that there's some nice little combinations. So that's what I'm doing. That's my take on a slow blues. Don't overthink it. Just fo focus on the feel of it. And if you want to learn some more today and you're feeling spontaneous, I said it already, but I am teaching a Slim Harpo class today focused around uh, raining in my heart and baby scratch my back. So if you have a C and a B flat harmonica, you can sign up and join me for this class. It's all recorded, comes with notes. I'm going to share with you not only how to play the songs and we'll practice playing them together, but I'm going to give you my take on how I've altered a little bit of the lines, just subtly, you know, just a little bit of a change to make it my own, which hopefully will inspire people that attend to figure out a way to make these songs their own as well. All right. That's what I got. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Yeah, it's good. you know, that's a good point, uh, Harry said. I hope that one day I can play the high notes so clean. The challenge most people have when they go up to the high end of the harmonica is that they are... They're, they're usually pinched in the embouchure and not relaxed and breathing from the diaphragm. You need like half the amount of air. So breathe very gently and relax everything like you just got shot up with Novocaine or something at the dentist. And then you'll find that that opens up your embouchure and it allows you to get a really nice tone up top. Uh, tongue blocked or puckered, either way. What else? 
it's not too late, Orlando, to sign up for the Slim Harpo class. Like I've been saying, um, I'll put the link up here when I'm done with this video. But just if it doesn't render in time and you don't see it, just go to um, harmonica123.com. Go to the store tab and go to Ronnie's newest classes or most popular classes. There's something like the word popular or newest. Click on that and you'll see how to sign up for the class. All right, any other questions? I'm here. I'm here for just a moment. If any, I'm looking at the chat. I don't think I missed anything. What notes are the best to sustain on a slow blues? I did miss something. Well, like I said earlier, the best notes are any note, <laughs> except for three draw, seven draw on cross harp, um, and maybe the four chord, four blow, one, four, one four or seven blow on a one chord over the root, that does not work. So let's hear how bad that sounds. One, two, three, <laughs> sounds like this. Four, this is the three, intro. Just let it come back around at the top. So if you go to the root of the four chord right here, you're gonna sound, it's gonna sound terrible. like somebody singing out of tune same thing if I go to the root of the one the one chord the root of the song and play actually if I play three draw anywhere in the whole progression or seven draw sustain you can get away with a little bit of it on the one it starts to sound a little funny on the four it just doesn't it's the better note choice anytime you play a three here's the best tip I can give you anytime you're playing three draw in second position Typically, unless it's part of a cool passing note phrase like those type of things, I'm using three draw really quickly. But when you are t otherwise using it and you're going to pass over it any faster, just bend it ever so slightly and you're safe. That means taking the three draw and learning how to just th that's what's tough. I realize that's hard to do, but there's there are many notes that you can play that are beautiful down there, like the blue note, the half step, and the full step. These notes sound like this. Here's the three drum. Blue note. Half step. And full. And these notes are available most anywhere in the progression. Typically, the full step is a five. That's a five chord um, sweet spot, but you can play that otherwise and build full step to half step. So if you learn how to just raise the tip of your tongue and get little baby bends, you'll find that you're you're in a safe spot to just go freely. Because I remember when I was learning, I was like, oh man, I don't want to get near that three hole. It was like it felt like a trap every time. Like I was going to play a flat note or play it too sharp, or just it wasn't gonna cooperate with me, it never sounded right. And that's because I didn't learn how to limit the tongue movement and find that sweet spot. The blue note, the half step. That's the real money area. That's the note you've been hearing me work with a lot today. Somebody's asking, are you playing single notes tongue blocked? Uh, it's both. I use I use pucker and tongue block. Um, cheers, Anthony. Good morning, Marcos. Sao Paulo. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. Um, I'm going to jump in and start to get some things done. Final steps steps that I need to take for this class coming at 11 a.m. Central. Join me. Slim Harpo is happening today. You all make it a great day and I'll see you soon. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back tomorrow. Please join me tomorrow. I've got a big announcement to make tomorrow about the upcoming Global Blues Harmonica Summit, which is going to go on sale for two days only. So it's a big event. 
four instructors come back I posted in the community page a little sneak peek if you go to my community tab you'll see who is teaching in that online event 